Okay, so now the back of lesson four. Before we take a look at exercise three, I wanted to review what we did the other day on Monday. So when we have the equation x squared equals four, we want to get x by itself. So we need to undo the operation of squaring in order to get x by itself. So the opposite of a squaring x would be to take the square root of x. And whatever you do to the left side to keep it balanced, you must do to the right. So it's now x and the square root of four. Remember when you're solving and taking the square root, we put that positive and negative root or answer of two. When there is another number or numbers on the side with x squared, we must get rid of those. So the opposite of multiplying x squared by two would be dividing x squared by two. So now we get x squared equals 25. And then now undo the square with the square root. And we get x equals plus or minus five. Okay, so reading, he says, of course, there's no reason our answers must come out as rational. So on the previous note page, okay, if we remind ourselves, all of our answers were whole numbers, and whole numbers are rational. There's no decimal there, but we can put a point zero. so those are um, decimals that do not repeat, okay, um, but they end, and decimals that end are rational. Okay. We can also have answers that are irrational numbers. So we did answers last class or on Monday in this online learning environment that where our answers were all rational numbers. So today we're going to have answers that have radicals in them or are irrational. Okay. In these cases, we are typically asked for some unknown reason to express our answers in simplest radical form. So that right there is a hint that your answer is going to have a radical in it. So let's take a look at exercise 3, both A and B. Solve each of the following equations by using inverse operations. So there must be other ways to solve these types of equations, right? Otherwise they wouldn't be telling you which method to use. So if they say by inverse operations, you have to solve by performing only inverse operations. So undoing everything that's there. So let's actually do B first, as we have to undo addition or subtraction first, and this has addition. So let's subtract the 10. So we have x minus 3 squared equals 28. Um, I'm sorry, phi or A actually had to inverse operations as well before taking the square root. I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> it's a bit exhausting in this online environment, right? So, whew, I had a moment. I guess I can only record maybe two videos at most in a day and not like five. So... Let's finish up this one just because, and then we'll go back to A. And A is actually easier, so hmm, we did the harder one first. So the opposite of squaring is the square root. So now we have x minus 3 equals the square root of 28. And like I was saying last class, all of our numbers underneath the radicals were perfect squares. They were friendly, as Kirk describes them. But we can't take the square root of 28. So what I like to do at this point, okay, is to show the plus 3 to undo that subtraction, right? Actually, no, I forget how I even like to put the plus and minus in at that point, okay? Because we already did take the square root, we just left it as a radical. So just like we put the plus and minus here, we want to put it there. So the plus and minus is there. The threes are gone. So we have x equals, and remember, I like to slide the three up front. So it's three plus or minus square root of 28. That's our answer. Okay? So if I looked on the calculator and I did three plus radical 28, we're going to get an irrational answer. 
A decimal does not repeat, it does not end. If I take that, right, there's my x. Minus 3, answer, then square it, and then add 10, do we get 38? We do. Okay, so that answer is correct. Okay, the other answer with the minus, so let's type it in 3 minus the square root of 28. Okay, so there's my decimal. It's easy to check with decimal form and not radical form. So then subtract 3 and square it. So subtract 3, enter, square, enter. And if we add 10, do we get 38? Yes, 28 plus 10 is 38. So those are my two answers, but they're not in simplest radical form. We go back to the directions, it says simplest radical form. So we need to reduce the radical 28. So off to the side, the square root of 28 is, break it down to your two radicals, largest perfect square factor of 28 is 4, it's 4 times 7, so that becomes 2 radical 7. So the issue was is the radical wasn't reduced. So now our final answer, x equals 3, so leave the 3 alone, plus minus, you're now just going to substitute that radical 28 with 2 radical 7. Okay, so now let's go to the easy one. So we're going to add 2 first. So 5x squared equals 40. Divide by 5. We get x squared. Why did I write 48 when I said 40? Okay, so x squared equals... Eight. Now take the square root, and x equals plus or minus radical 8. And that's the answer. It's right. Okay, well, I mean, it's partially right. It's just not in simplest form. So we have to reduce the square root of 8. 8 is also divisible by 4, so it's actually 4 times 2. So radical 8 reduces to 2 radical 2. So our answer is going to be x equals plus or minus, and we're going to replace that radical 8 with its simplest form of 2 radical 2. There. All right, one or two more examples. So number four. Francis graphs the parabola 1 half x squared minus 6. It's on the grid below. He believes that the quadratic has roots or zeros. Remember, another word for zeros is also roots. Okay. These are the answers that when we plug them in, right, for x, we should get zero for y. That's why we call them zeros. Find the zeros of this function in simplest radical form and explain why Francis must be incorrect. So the way we find the zeros is replace the y with zero, okay? Because when we solve for them, if they match uh, Francis, then he's correct. But it says explain why he's incorrect, so we must get a different answer. So find the zeros means plug y in for zero, or plug zero in for y, so one-half x squared minus 6. So if I'm going to solve this, the first thing we do is add 6. I don't have much room, so try to save room. So 1 half x squared divided by 1 half. Now you want to do this on the calculator. So 6 divided by and use your fraction key. So 1 over 2 and we get 12. So we have 12 equals x squared. Okay, so I'm going to move this up here because we don't have much room. And I like the x squared on the left so I'm going to put it there. Alright, now we're going to undo this square with square root and x equals plus or minus radical 12. Okay, 
I need to simplify my answer because the direction said in the simplest radical form. So x equals, I'm just going to put the two radicals underneath. 12 is 4 times 3. So the answer in radical form is 2 radical 3, as the square root of 4 is 2. Now, is that decimal equal to this decimal? So let's go to the calculator. So 2 square root of 3 is not. Well, it's rounded. Okay? Um, so here, Francis was incorrect on A, but not too far off. I'm going to use this space to explain why he's incorrect, but say, uh, I'm going to say how I can tell how good his estimate was there as well. So why is he incorrect? So Francis is incorrect because the answer the are plus and minus two radical three, which is irrational, good review for your quiz Friday, and plus or minus 3.5 is rational. And we can also say that plus minus 3 radical 5 is not the same as plus minus 2 radical 3. Okay? He is close, yes. I'm going to say as I typed 2, right, radical 3 into the calculator and it equals 3.46410161516. All right, Whew. one last example. So take a minute to copy that down. I'm going to drink a water, and we'll finish this up. All right, number five. Find the zeros of the function. So we want to place zero in for the function notation. So it becomes zero equals x plus 4 squared minus 20. Find the zeros in simplest radical form. Okay, that's what we've been doing. Then express them in terms of a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. So we have to give it in radical form and rounded decimal form. So we have x plus 4 in parentheses squared minus 20. So we undo the subtraction first by adding 20. So we have 20 equals x plus 4 squared. Now the square root to undo the square. Now 20, largest perfect square factor of 20. So I'm going to put my plus and minus and it's 4. We've done this one a couple times, 4 times 5. And we get plus or minus 2 radical 5 equals x plus 4. So I actually, in this side here, I reduced the radical all the way, okay? Um, so now let's bring that up over here. So I like the x is on the left side, so x plus 4 equals plus or minus 2 radical 5. So now I have to undo the addition with subtraction. And what am I going to do with that negative 4? I'm going to slide it right up front. So x equals negative 4 plus 2 radical 5. All right. So there's my answer in simplest radical form. Check. Now I have to provide the other type of answer, which is a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. So on the calculator, so the first one, because there's two answers. So first, we have negative 4 plus 2 radical 5. 
Hundredth is two decimal places, so negative four plus two radical five. So we look, there's the seven there, to the right is a two. In order to bump the seven to an eight, it has to be, the number to the right has to be five or higher. So this answer is equal to 0 0.47. And then the second answer is negative 4 minus 2 radical 5. So negative 4 minus 2 radical 5, which is negative 8.47. So the two answers as radical form, or decimal form, I think this is my last video. Ah, oh, I miss being in a classroom. All right, so the first one, we have x equals 0 0.47, and x equals negative 8.47, all right? that is rounded to the nearest hundredth. And we're done. All right, study, because remember your quiz is on Friday. Take care.